Hey everybody, welcome to Cybersecurity for Busy People. I'm Zach Varnell, and as normal, let's just get straight into the stories of the day. All right, first up, we have U.S. authorities are investigating TP-Link, one of the most popular router manufacturers in the country, over concerns about its Chinese ownership and potential national security risks. So with roughly 65% of the U.S. market for home and small business routers, TP-Link devices are widely used, including by federal agencies. The investigation was prompted by reports linking TP-Link routers to cyber attacks, and a recent analysis from Microsoft revealed that thousands of TP-Link routers had been compromised by Chinese threat actors to target think tanks, government organizations, and defense contractors. The U.S. government officials are considering banning the sale of TP-Link TP routers as early as next year. Such move would mark the largest extraction of Chinese telecom equipment since the Trump administration cracked down on Huawei. If you're somewhat technically inclined and have a TP-Link router, now might be a good time to consider installing something like DDWRT firmware. So DDWRT firmware or DDWRT, I don't know how you say that, but it's an open source replacement for your router stock firmware. I've been running it for years. I enjoy tinkering around with it. So it offers several advantages. So first, I think it can enhance security because it removes the potential for backdoors or vulnerabilities that might exist in manufacturer's firmware um, and provides regular updates to address its known issues. So it's um, open source. So a lot of the manufacturer firmware might not be. You have no idea what's going on behind those closed doors. But with this DDWRT firmware, it is open source and people can go out and audit the firmware, look at it, make sure there are no backdoors, search for vulnerabilities, things like that. So it also unlocks advanced features though. So with DDWRT, you get to you know, play with features that are usually reserved for more expensive router models, ones that are, you know, meant for corporate environments or data centers, things like that will have the features that this unlocks on just home routers, really. So it gives you more control over your network. And if you're technically inclined, you can enable features that you might not otherwise have access to, like quality of service or, um, you know, automatic VPN connection, just things like that. And there's all sorts of them inside there that you probably won't see on your default uh, manufacturer firmware. And then finally, it can extend your loud router's lifespan. You know, if your router is end of life and no longer receiving updates from the manufacturer, you can throw DDWRT on there and it may improve performance and may be supported for even longer. I think it is better than having the default TP-Link or whatever firmware. I trust it more and I've learned a lot just messing with it and I'm able to do things that I'm not able to do with default manufacturer uh, firmware. Anyway, go research that. Be careful. Maybe don't run it on your only router because you could brick it. Run it on something cheap until you know what you're doing and then you'll know, have fun with it and learn. All right, next story we have that Microsoft has disclosed a critical vulnerability in Windows remote desktop services. So this is being tracked as CVE 2024-49115. And with the severity score of 8.1 out of 10, so that's high, it's pretty uh, important. It's not the most critical, like we've seen things here that are 10 out of 10 on this show. Vulnerability was revealed on December 10th and allows the attackers to execute remote code on effective systems. So that's basically game over, like we've talked about. A lot of times if you're able to um, run remote code on a system, you're running the most impactful code you can that does things like plants back doors or connects out back to your attacker controlled system, things like that, or gathers credentials, gathers um, sensitive files. You know, people aren't running remote code just for fun, but they're doing it to try to own that system. And if this vulnerability is allowing that, that's a very attractive thing for, to uh, for hackers. Let's see, what makes it particularly concerning though, is that there's no user interaction and no privileges apparently to even exploit it. So it doesn't matter, I guess, if you're running as system administrator or, uh, you know, the root level or the most super user level, it seems like that exploiting this 
could be done with just regular user level. Um, it's pretty complex, so that reduces the likelihood of successful attacks. And whoever you know does figure this out is probably going to be a pretty advanced technical person or team of people who, you know, may be able to figure this out and get a working proof of concept. The flaw affects multiple versions of Windows, including Windows Server 2016, which is you know old at this point, all the way up to t Windows Server 2025. The good news is this has been patched. The last uh, December 2024 Patch Tuesday updates came through and this was patched. So really it's easy if somebody needs to protect against this, just update your Windows computer. And there's of course so far no evidence of active exploitation. There's been no public disclosure of, you know, a working proof of concept or vulnerability, but still, you know, install the latest security updates and you don't have to worry about this quite as much. So they're available through Microsoft Update, just the way you standard apply your updates. And then also, you know, when we're dealing with remote desktop, follow the best practices, like limit the RDP protocol to only access from trusted networks, so like a management network. Don't have it open to the internet, of course. Don't leave it open on guest networks or anything where, you know, untrusted users might be, but limit it to just, you or your, you know, your IT team or your engineers or whatever the case may be that can access it when it's needed and not just willy nilly. And then also, you know, consider getting a vulnerability assessment or penetration test from Asteros. If you need to uncover where these outdated and insecure systems may be, you know, figure out are things properly segmented? Are they not? Is it running an old version, a vulnerable version of RDP or is it not? So as always, just proactive action is your best defense against these emerging attacks. Okay, the next story here is that Trend Micro has introduced an AI-driven toolset aimed at automating key cybersecurity tasks. That's the boring, not as fun way to say it. What they're calling it is an AI brain. That's way more fun. Uh, so it's designed to assist organizations in managing threats and reducing the workload on security teams. The AI system is embedded in the Trend Micro security suite and provides several functions. So this is what they tout as their functionality. I haven't played with this myself, but I just thought it was interesting because it's one of the first security tools on such a wide scale that I've seen that is implementing AI. Plus it has the cool AI brain um, title, can't ignore that. So it says that the system can analyze large volumes of security alerts, help teams identify and focus on the most critical issues. So it seems like maybe the AI might have you know, anomaly detection or be able to cut through the noise of just all these false positive alerts and help drill down on what is actual alert that needs attention. At least that's the claim. It says it can detect and mitigate known ransomware threats before they cause damage. So again, that would be known threats, ones where we're familiar with how the ransomware works and perhaps even how to decrypt it or stop it before it takes hold. This wouldn't be against, you know, novel or new ransomware that we're not familiar with yet. It says it can update data storage protocols to comply with changing privacy laws. So that would help, you know, any lapses that may cause a regulatory violation. So it sounds like you can change settings on the fly to adapt to whatever the current environment is. And it stores institutional knowledge about vulnerabilities and past incidents so that even as employees leave or change roles, all that data is available to the AI. And I guess even to the humans if they wanna go back and review that. It also claims it can automate routine security tasks such as applying patches, identify patterns and large data sets to predict potential vulnerabilities, and assist with workflows by reducing the number of false positives and alert systems. So I don't know, a lot of that, um, you know, we'll see if that is true, if it's hype or if it's a really useful tool, but I did find it interesting that this seems like one of the first instances of agentic AI, perhaps. I'm not sure if they would call it that yet, but it looks like the AI is being left to actually perform actions autonomously, perhaps even make decisions. I'm not sure about that part. Rather than what we've seen of, you know, a chat bot or something that depends on you instigating the conversation in order to get feedback, this one would be 
always running, looking for what it's trained to look for, and then perhaps even taking um, action by itself when it finds whatever it's trained to find. Should be interesting. I think that's where the AI um, market, I guess you'd say, is going. I think the next step is going to be agentic AI. And as uh, organizations explore the use of AI in cybersecurity programs, tools like this may improve efficiency while addressing these threats. But for many companies, it'll be a decision of how much to trust in AI or autonomous tools. It'll be interesting to watch for sure. So this brings us to our last story, which isn't exactly news, but just some commentary from Roe Sherman that I thought was interesting on dark reading here. Uh, It's called Cultivating a Hacker Mindset in Cybersecurity Defense. So in cybersecurity, tools and technology are critical, but they aren't enough on their own. What truly makes a difference is understanding how attackers think, adopting a hacker mindset to anticipate and outsmart them. Attackers aren't just pushing buttons or, you know, typing cryptic text into a console or something like that. They're making strategic decisions, choosing paths of least resistance to achieve their goals. They understand that defenders are just humans and humans are predictable. So they know that a lot of times the obvious low hanging fruit vulnerabilities get patched while overlooking misconfigurations or trusted third party integrations things that would not be caught by scanners or automated tools. So that's where attackers thrive, exploiting weak points that allow them to move laterally, exfiltrate data, establish footholds, all unnoticed. Too many times defenders will rely on automated tools and predefined scripts, but attackers don't follow the rules. They challenge them. They test boundaries, explore unnoticed cracks, and do the unexpected. So for defenders, the lesson is clear. You can't be tool reliant. You can't be button pushers or just checkbox checkers. These tools are valuable, of course, but they're only part of the equation. So take the solar winds breach as an example. Attackers exploited trusted automated processes and compromised thousands of systems. That's not something a vulnerability scanner could have, you know, targeted and spit out. Here's your issue patch it because it was a trusted system an automated process that they already used they already thought they understood and that legitimate process was exploited so it's a reminder of the dangers of blind trust and automation or really the blind trust in any system you have set up you should always be bringing in the hacker mindset and the human element to look for cracks and look for misconfigurations and look for errors and just anything like that that may not be a technical vulnerability in the code or anything, but still exploitable by a good hacker. Another example is the PsySense breach. Attackers didn't even break in. They logged in legitimately. They used misconfigurations and legitimate access to get in. So that may come from something like a weak password or a stolen password, easily guessable one, or one that is used on a third party site cracked and then they tried other places including where the person works or other applications they may use which could be you know your company's application or something like that defenders need to shift their focus from just spotting unusual activity attack attempts exploitation attempts things like that to really understanding the intent behind the attacks Uh, develop a hacker mindset and that requires practice and creativity Involve your team in attack simulations where they think like adversaries. Encourage problem solving and unconventional approaches. The goal is just not to understand how attacks happen technically, but why? What might the goal have been and what should they look out for in the future? So defenses can be built where they are needed most, where they see people putting pressure. And then also use that hacker mindset to... Think like that and develop your own threat models of like maybe the defenses over here need to be beefed up because of something we hadn't thought of previously. So, you know, of course, security isn't just about technology. It's about curiosity, adaptability and staying one step ahead of everyone else. If you're looking to strengthen your defenses with real time testing, real world actionable insights, 
check out Asteros.com. We know that while automation and AI can enhance security and enhance our workflows, the real edge comes from human intelligence and that hacker mentality. That's why we focus on understanding your company, your industry, and your unique challenges. Our penetration testing and vulnerability management services deliver actionable insights without false positives that are tailored to your specific needs and give you specific tailored remediation guidance as well. So if you're interested in penetration testing on your company's web apps or your networks, or you know someone who might be, check out asteros.com, reach out and let's chat. That's it for this time on cybersecurity for busy people. We will see you next time. Thanks for watching.